right guys so this is a bit of a more chill episode of the savage filmmaker i would consider this type of thing supplemental to my main videos so this is a much more informal discussion for those who are interested and a much faster way for me to communicate ideas and advice rather than my regular massive style of video the, the question that was asked was can you talk about how you can get clients when you're starting out as a filmmaker or videographer and this is a very tricky question because there's not necessarily a right way to um, go about this and it's going to be different for everyone you know depending on where you live the industry in your area the demand for work and even the equipment that you start off with there are a lot of variables um, but I can talk a little bit about a few tips that have helped me effectively find and retain clients for video work, especially when I was starting out. So I'm coming from the perspective of someone who is starting out as an OPC or a one person crew. The first piece of advice is get a showreel. Now my showreel is super out of date and <laughs> Part of the reason that I haven't updated is that I haven't needed to because I'm being offered work through my regular clients so I'm no longer actively searching for work or at least not to the same degree that I was when I began. But having a showreel that shows what you can do and uh, that you can just share as a link to people that you can play on your phone for a potential client as you pitch to them is really handy and um, you can communicate your value with the quality of the content that you make. So uh, keep your show reel um, short, definitely not longer than two minutes, and really be tough on yourself when it comes to selecting footage for the video. Is it the best of your best work? You know, does it show a bit of your own unique flavor and style? And um, you know, most importantly. Um, try and show a diverse range of the types of things that you can film. If you end up just having the same type of videos over and over again, you need to just pick the best example of that thing and make the show reel shorter. Or you need to go out and make some more content. If you show you can only film one style of video, then it's likely you will only find um, work shooting that type of thing. So think about showing off your diversity and adaptability. You can specialize in specific areas a little bit further down the track, uh, but in the beginning, you, you probably wanna try filming um, a variety of video content. And uh, another tip with showreels um, should be, you know, keep them constantly updated as you keep improving. You know, your videos will also keep getting better, so make sure your showreel reflects your improvement. Every few months, do a refresh of this. Uh, also, don't date your showreel, which again, I've made the mistake of, you know, putting the year in your showreel only dates that the showreel um, if you haven't updated it like me. I understand that this is a bit of a, a catch-22 when you don't have any work to show on your showreel because you haven't gotten any work to show it. But um, that's where we move into tip number two. So if you don't have material for a showreel or you don't have content to show clients and advertise yourself, go out and film spec ads or commercials. Um, these are ads that are not commissioned by a client but that you create on your own um, in hopes of appealing to the type of client or brand who makes similar ads. We see a lot of epic spec commercials on YouTube but um, I, I think it's important not to be intimidated by that because you don't have to think big, you know, how easy is it for you to, for example, create a nice interview setup with a friend to show that you can shoot interviews because, you know, sort of interviews and in B-roll, uh, that type of footage is going to be your bread and butter probably starting out. So recruiting a few people to sit patiently while you create a mock interview setting shouldn't be too difficult. Um, and you can apply that to you know a lot of different things. How hard is it to sort of prepare and dress a nice looking meal and film it nicely? Um, you know that's something that you can sort of easily do to show that you can shoot that type of sort of food content. Um, but you can do that yourself, you know, with a little bit of effort. And it's not something that requires this huge, you know, budget and all this money for you to sink into this thing that you're not getting paid for. People looking at your showreel 
don't necessarily know that you know some of these things weren't a, a, a gig that you were paid for and that they are just on spec um, they just see that you know how to shoot an interview and this goes for any type of spec that you want to create the best way to build a portfolio of work when you haven't got work is to start by creating work samples of the type of thing you'd like to be paid to create in the future along with your showreel you should also look at creating a website you know I can't stress this enough when starting out you don't pay someone to make a website just customize a template from Wix or Squarespace purchase a domain and pay for their lower subscription and no I'm definitely not sponsored by either of them um, but I say this from the point of view of that's how I make a lot of my sort of you know basic websites but they do the job um, it's going to cost you very little to set this up but it's going to go a long way in presenting yourself as a viable um, professional um, and as a freelancer having some pillars that showcase your work like a website and a showreel and a dedicated Instagram account can sort of foster a sense of trust with your clients that you are quote unquote um, legit they're investing money in believing that you can do a job for them well and trusting you to be a professional. So, you know, give them a reason to establish that initial trust before you cement that relationship with the work that you actually provide them. And this also goes for little things such as your email address, you know, spend a bit of extra money on getting a proper one um, that does not seem like your own personal account. So, you know, um, I'm sexy 33 at gmail.com is not gonna cut it here these are all just small things you can do to present yourself um, in the right way to potential clients um, the other thing that I would say is you know always have a business card with you that um, you can give uh, to potential clients when you're looking for work because the amount of times a conversation with a stranger you know when you're just out and about will turn into their interest in what you do as a filmmaker you know and you never know when you may run into someone that is looking for video work and if you can provide them a card that leads to your website and your showreel um, you give yourself an in with that person and uh, people are traditionally lazy so if you give them a reason to use you as opposed to have to actually look to find someone else you know to shoot this thing for them um, you can definitely capitalize on that sense of laziness but you have to at the same time sort of be an opportunist um, when these kind of small sort of conversations kind of lead to potentially bigger things so next tip is when you're starting out don't be afraid to work for free and I know that there is a lot of argument around this but you wouldn't trust a builder to build you a house based off him telling you he knows how to build a house really well. You would commission him based off a track record of building really good houses and an appreciation of his skill and craftsmanship in doing so. So, you know, why would filmmaking be any different? You know, people aren't just going to believe you can make great content. You have to show them. And that comes back to the trust thing. So if you're just starting out, absolutely offer to do jobs for free you know this puts uh, a lot less pressure on you nobody's going to be angry about a video they got for nothing that they're not 100% happy with because you know they got it for nothing but they might be unhappy with a video they paid for that has not met their expectations because you couldn't meet those expectations due to your inexperience you know so doing videos for free is a great way to learn uh, it's a great way to build content for a showreel and most importantly it's a great way to network with the type of people you want to work with professionally you know um, yes absolutely those clients will start to pay you after you produce several things for them for free um, it's about building up that trust factor and yes some people will try and take advantage of you but working out the difference between those people you know is an important lesson and ultimately um, they're not the type of clients you want to work with long term anyway so valuable lessons to be learned doing um, jobs for free and sort of discerning you know those who will then continue to take advantage of that versus those who recognize your value and will start to pay you for contributing to their business you have to know when to stop working for free um, but as a way to build connections and come up 
um, in the topic of conversation when people are looking for more video work, you know, this is an excellent starting point. And I still happily work for free if it's something I'm interested in and I think it will add to my body of work. Or sometimes if I see it as an opportunity to flex a different type of filmmaking muscle that I haven't used before. So there's no shame in using unpaid work to fuel your growth as a filmmaker and establish connections that will lead to making money. Next tip, you know, this business is about who you know. So when you're looking for people to approach, um, think local and think about who you know. You know, there's no point approaching large brands and companies to create videos because they will already have people who do this and they will you know pay to have it done you know that comes later so think small uh, it may well start off with you know people that you know maybe you have a friend who owns a bar or a coffee shop down the road or you have a friend who is a small business owner and you could create videos uh, featuring their product so these are the kind of places you can approach to offer to film a promotional video for you know for free and if you don't have any contacts like that um, go to the next best thing so approach the places that you frequent and enjoy you know maybe that's your local gym your favorite restaurant you know something like that your favorite sort of hole in the wall place um, maybe you don't have direct contact but you can approach them and see if they're receptive um, to making some content for them you know someone who makes products you use and you believe in that is local so one of my first jobs came about through you know my girlfriend at the time who worked at a bar and the bar owner wanted to create some videos for that bar um, you know my writing partner also worked for a vegan cheese company and so i made a video for that company and you'll find these types of people and contacts all around you if you keep your eyes open and your ear to the ground um, you know to begin with work won't come to you so you go looking for it and the worst thing that you can hear is no and if someone isn't interested you know that's their loss you know the question of where do you start is always difficult but um, going down the Fiverr or Upwork uh, route to begin with can be a great launching point sign up as a freelancer on one of those platforms you know, for years I did freelance jobs for several of these kind of freelancer sites, mainly because it took out the work of finding new work. On some of the platforms, the site itself pairs clients with an appropriate freelancer and assigns work to them. On others, the clients can browse the available freelancer lists and approach you directly. It can be really good for building your experience uh, that you can then leverage with clients outside of the platform. So yes, you will find that you do get underpaid, uh, but these services take out the stress and hassle of finding work in the beginning because they do it for you. And also the payment structure of completing the jobs is very transparent and you know dealing with quotes and invoicing can be one of the most difficult things to get your head around when you're starting out. And um, these platforms kind of remove that hurdle and I don't think uh, this is what you should do like long term when you're building your filmmaking business. But I do think it's good in that starting out phase to get the ball rolling. And it's something you can do in between looking for other work and it can keep your skills sharp. So next tip is always look to over deliver and always keep looking to refine and improve your work. You know, each job, whether paid or unpaid, should sort of represent an opportunity to improve and never consider work that you do for free or work you do for a small amount to be any less valuable than the high paying work. You know, Take the same values into every job. You're not doing a business a favor by doing this video for them. You're learning and you're providing them the best service you can. And the client that you make a video for cheaply in the beginning may be the client that commissions you to do all of their social media videos for six months down the road and if you treat every job as a competition to sort of outdo yourself you know clients will take notice of this and it comes back to building trust establish this relationship with your attitude work ethic and skill by doing the free or underpaid job you will discover many clients will come back to you because they now trust and know you can deliver for them so build your reputation on over delivering 
you know, I can only speak to my own experience, but of all the freelance work I've done outside of places like Upwork, only a very small handful have not come back to me, you know, to ask me to create more content for them. So once you establish that relationship, people will keep coming back to you. And that's how you build and grow your client list by over delivering and being committed to self-improvement. And that may sound a little bit cheesy, but it's worked for me. So the next tip is reliability. Um, and we keep going back to trust because it's the foundation of your client relationships and reliability is the source of that trust. It's simple things, you know, show up early, be prepared, deliver what you promise, deliver when you promise, don't miss deadlines. If you say you'll hand over a video on a certain date, do it. Don't be late for your shoots. An hour early is better than 15 minutes late. And it's often the case that the client has set aside a very specific time for you to be there and they've organized a lot of things to accommodate you in this filming and if you don't show up when you say you will and if you cancel at the last minute or you don't deliver a video when you say you will you will damage that relationship and you know potentially lose it completely you know make that work a priority uh, when you're looking to become a professional start by conducting yourself like a professional and you will be treated like a professional. You know, the most important value a client will put on someone they want to work with, particularly a freelancer, is reliability. And so the next tip is uh, network. Uh, network, but not necessarily, you know, obviously networking is good. We all want to network and, you know, get ourselves out there, of course, you know, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing. But what I'm saying too is network with other freelancers. Um, there is a tendency to look at other freelancers as if they are in direct competition with you. And yes, to an extent they are, but they can just as easily provide you more work. And this is something that is very often overlooked, but I have gotten a lot of work from other freelancers referring jobs onto me from their clients that they're too busy to do. Um, or asking me to help them as a second operator on a bigger shoot when they need a larger crew. And the same is very true of myself. You know, I constantly ask other people to work on part of a project or an entire job if uh, I'm not able to do it or I don't sort of have all the resources to do it. So if you can't do a job for a regular client because of another commitment, referring someone you trust to do that job in your place is good for everyone. You know, you help your client solve their problem and you help a fellow shooter get work and you establish a relationship where they may do the same for you. It, it is tempting when getting bigger jobs to try and do everything yourself and make more money, but sometimes the best answer is recruiting some other people to help you, you know, pay yourself less and help someone else out. The chances are they'll remember and do the same for you. It's certainly been the case for me. And this also helps to sort of introduce yourself to new circles of clients and more future opportunities. So, you know, don't be afraid to sort of share the wealth and share the work. Um, so I think key takeaways, build up your showreel and put it on a website, keep it current and diverse, shoot your own spec work to show clients that what you're capable of and when you don't have that experience and work for free in the beginning and use that work to build your portfolio. You know, use that free work to leverage paid work. Approach local businesses through people you know to begin with. Expand out from there. Uh, sign up for platforms like Fiverr and Upwork and use it to supplement your freelance work and gain more experience. Be reliable and over deliver. Give clients a reason to ask you to do more work for them and sort of treat every job like you are being paid top dollar for it, even if you're not being paid anything. Network with and help other freelancers and they will help you in return. And finally, and I think maybe this is probably one of the most important things to say, is that it takes years to become an overnight success. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. It takes time. You'll have good days and bad days. You'll have busy and dry spells. Big opportunities will fall through at the last minute. You know, things will go wrong and everything takes longer than you think it will. You know, that's true of all types of filmmaking. You build relationships uh, and find clients over months and years, it doesn't happen overnight. So when you're at the start of your journey and you're struggling to make those first inroads, remind yourself of this and 
you'll get there as long as you stick at it keep hustling so good luck it's a jungle out there and just remember shoot eat sleep repeat so i'm hoping to do some more of these types of videos where i just answer your questions in a bit of detail so if you have a filmmaking question that you'd like me to cover you know drop it in the comment section below and if it's something i can talk about um, i'll maybe make some more of these q a style episodes and if you found this uh, helpful and you want to support me it's really easy you know give this a like subscribe to the channel you know um, watch some of my other youtube content check out my feature films which i've linked in the description below as always i am the savage filmmaker and i'll see you when i see you